Hi everybody, welcome to our presentation. Today's topic is going to cover immigration policies under COVID-19. Uh, this particular presentation mirrors the written article that we published on November 20th, which you can find on our site under news articles. So interesting uh, that during COVID, uh, immigration programs in Canada have actually continued uh, in a quite uh, robust manner. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, of confusion in terms of who can travel to Canada for permanent residence, uh, for temporary workers, students, and visitors. I'm going to cover all of that uh, in this presentation. So, uh, first of all, uh, interesting to know uh, that on a permanent resident side, the government of Canada had planned to bring into Canada 341,000 immigrants, including applicants and family members. Uh, that number has been significantly curtailed, uh, which I will just uh, say to you that is probably about 40% uh, uh, decline at least. Uh, so about 145,000 people uh, at, were admitted to Canada by the end of uh, uh, September. Uh, compared to the previous year uh, when 265,000 for the same period were admitted to Canada under all programs. Um, and interestingly enough, the Government of Canada plans as part of its uh, economic recovery uh, program, uh, the government is heavily banking on the immigration streams under the, a wide range of categories to make up for this significant shortfall in 2020. Uh, for 2021, 22, and 23, uh, we're seeing approximately uh, a 50,000 uh, increase, 50,000 uh, individuals will be admitted to Canada in 2021 over and above what was planned uh, in 2020. And then for each of the successive years in 22 uh, and 23, uh, it's 10,000 increases so that by 2023, the government plans to bring in about 420,000 uh, permanent residents under all categories, of course, economic class and family class and protected persons, etc. Uh, so, first off, if you are wondering who can travel to Canada on a temporary basis, uh, you have to be either be an immediate family member of a Canadian citizen or a Canadian permanent resident, and you have to be coming to Canada for more than 15 days because you have to quarantine for 14 days. Uh, generally, uh, that's for the visit side of things if you're planning to visit Canada. Uh, there are no border crossings, so you have to be flying into the country from different source countries. Um, if you are uh, approved for permanent residence and you're already in Canada, obviously, uh, then you can continue forward in your plans. Interesting, this past year, uh, on the permanent residence side, uh, most of the invitations that were given uh, for the first, uh, from the period of March until September, most of the invitations to apply were given to people who are already in Canada, either in the Canadian Experience class or under one of the provincial nominee programs. Um, so under COVID, uh, the number of permanent resident applicants to the country has uh, precipitously declined uh, compared to 2019, as I said earlier. Um, and the difference is approximately 90,000 for the nine month period. That's the shortfall uh, that we see. Um, and uh, government is still processing applications, but unfortunately there are uh, many obstacles for people to get all of the requirements in place. Even though the application process has been extended, once you have an invitation to apply, you have 90 days to get all your affairs in order and submit a perfected application. Uh, but for some people, um, that uh, is, is not enough, and we can uh, suggest that there are uh, provisions for extensions. Um, but uh, more or less, uh, the system is in place to continue receiving applications. Um, but in terms of coming to Canada, um, there are still obviously obstacles in, in terms of activating your permanent residence visas. Um, so you uh, are really uh, facing challenges in terms of waiting until this whole uh, pandemic subsides. But if you're in the United States, uh, people who are applying for permanent residence from the United States and you are flying to Canada, uh, we're seeing a lot of our clientele from the U.S. 
able to come to the country uh, and activate their permanent residence. Um, so throughout COVID, uh, the more popular uh, economic program, of course, is express entry. And throughout COVID, the government has been accepting applications uh, into the system and issuing invitations. Of course, for the first nine months, as I said earlier, uh, most of the invitations were going to people who were either working in Canada under Canadian experience or under one of the provincial uh, programs. So if you were under a provincial program, of course, that means you're uh, having to have a, uh, employment. Uh, for many uh, uh, candidates who lost their employment, uh, there have been policies put in place where you have up to a year to uh, secure continuing employment. Um, and so you wouldn't necessarily have to leave the country. Um, the uh, fact of the matter is now the invitations to apply have been issued in all programs uh, starting in September. Uh, in fact, in 2020, a record year for the number of invitations that were issued. We exceeded 100,000 invitations. And that gives a sense that the government is planning to resume at some point in 2021. And so the shortfall that we're facing in 2020 uh, will hopefully be made up uh, in, in 2021. Uh, most of the provinces are planning to increase levels, increase uh, in line with the government plans to increase overall numbers. All of the provinces are planning to have increases with the exception of Alberta. Alberta is unfortunately facing uh, severe uh, challenges on the economy side of things due to the oil industry and other factors. Uh, so it doesn't plan to uh, increase immigration levels uh, for 2021. Uh, interesting that Quebec government plans to increase its levels uh, to close to 50,000 uh, overall. Um, and they are currently ex still accepting applications into their system. Um, and we are going to be able to uh, encourage you if you do qualify for one of the Quebec programs uh, that you could certainly uh, approach us and we can guide you on how best uh, to get this done uh, in the most efficient way possible. Um, for provincial immigration, as I said, uh, of course you, you need to have a job in most of the uh, nomination programs. Um, and so there, most of the provinces are issuing invitations to apply. Um, and if you uh, were already in Canada and you lost your job, as I said earlier, uh, you do have a year uh, to um, recover and, and, and get new employment. Uh, perhaps surprisingly, uh, the temporary immigration programs in terms of either working or studying, those programs have really evolved and they've been quite active uh, in 2020, even in the face of COVID. For example, um, if you uh, are a worker in, in, in one of the various programs, obviously uh, that is, uh, for many employers, is very important that they have access to this continuing labor supply. Uh, and if you have continuing employment, uh, and you uh, are ready to come to Canada, or, uh, either you have continuing employment, um, you've left the country and you're coming back, or you're a new worker planning to come under one of the programs, um, you are able to come to Canada uh, flying, but of course you have to quarantine for, for 14 days. Um, the numbers of people who've come to Canada, surprisingly, it's about 90% of the typical numbers under the uh, International Mobility Program or the Temporary Foreign Worker Program. The numbers that have actually come to Canada in 2020, it's, it's about 90% of, of a typical annual level. So uh, it hasn't been that affected because of the policies that are put in place, in largely quarantine. And of course, for the those that have uh, employers that are uh, sponsoring and uh, need uh, foreign workers, uh, those employers can still uh, draw upon the foreign labor market and bring to Canada uh, those candidates uh, to fill important positions. Now, uh, if you're an international student, uh, very interesting, uh, of course you need to be accepted into a designated learning uh, institute. Again, we cover all of the, these requirements on our November 20 article, uh, and we have a list of the designated uh, post-secondary schools uh, that are a part of this uh, 
uh, program. Um, again, most of these designated learning institutes, uh, all of them in fact, have to have a readiness plan uh, for COVID. So there is a combination of online learning and other requirements. And of course, you can come to Canada on a study visa uh, with the proviso that you're going to have to quarantine uh, for 14 days. And it's, it's pretty much uh, for a study, you've got a two-step process, which we cover uh, on, our, on our website. Um, just in terms of the plan for the future, uh, all indications are with what's taking place with the vaccine that's come out, uh, a number of uh, vaccines that are now uh, being tested in terms of uh, its, its rollout. Um, different parts of the country are receiving different uh, batches of vaccines. Um, so m all indications are by the late spring or hopefully early summer, uh, we could see uh, what we would say is a back to normal uh, immigration program across uh, all, all different uh, categories. Um, of course, that's not based on anything concrete or anything uh, official, uh, but indications are that this vaccine uh, is taking hold in, in a number of uh, international venues, as well as in Canada, and hopefully by the late spring, early summer, we could see um, uh, a, a complete resumption with different, obviously, a different uh, lay of the land in terms of how we go about our daily lives um, in post-COVID. Uh, uh, in terms of the actual numbers of immigration uh, candidates coming to Canada in 2021, uh, the planned levels of 401,000 will largely be made up of the federal skilled uh, workers. Um, so there's about 110,000 uh, federal skilled worker uh, applicants and their family members, um, I'm sorry, uh, applications. Um, that will be uh, approved. Um, and then, uh, interesting, it's the provincial programs that have also faced, are, are going to realize a significant increase. There's 80,800 that are planned to be brought in. Um, so the total economic uh, category of, of immigration will be uh, 232,500. And the family side of things, uh, spouses, partners, and children, uh, as well as grandparents and parents, uh, that will total 103,500 uh, in 2021. Again, this is a significant increase from the 341,000 that was planned for 2020, which of course uh, didn't materialize. So overall, we're very optimistic uh, in terms of coming out of this uh, in a very positive way. Um, if you have interest in Canada, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of chatter out there uh, on why people are interested in Canada, why uh, the numbers of applications are, are, are very uh, high. Um, there's a lot of good reasons to be looking forward uh, to making Canada your new home in 2021. Uh, take a look at our site, um, stay in touch with us uh, on social media, and uh, we look forward to giving you insight um, very soon. Uh, follow us like us, and if you have specific questions, please feel free to write us by email, csinger at immigration.ca. Thanks so much for joining us.